since Valentine's Day bombings have aroused a lot of furor in the international media, and everybody seems to have their own explanation for what really happened. The official story released by Thai Press is that three men of Iranian descent had rented a condo in downtown Bangkok, Bangkok off of Sukhumvit Soy 71. These men apparently had been stockpiling explosives for a future terrorist attack against Israeli officials in Bangkok. On Valentine's Day, one of the explosives, or, or several I should say, went off and blew off the roof of the condo they were renting. The three men exited the house. Two of them managed to get a taxi and escape, but a third man began throwing explosives at a taxi at police officers, and in the course of doing so, one of his grenades, explosives, whatever they were, bounced off a tree and detonated on his legs, blowing them off. That's the official story. However, there are a lot of people who feel that something fishy is going on, and we've, loca we've landed on about three specific... I guess you would say conspiracy theories that these skeptics feel is feel are much more plausible. The first theory is that this attack was actually a false flag attack uh, organized by either Israel's Mossad or the U.S.'s CIA intended to start a war with Iran. Second theory is that this was a double false flag attack organized by the by the Iranian government to look like it had been organized by the Israelis in order to spark a war with Israel. <laughs> the third theory is that some other group had, was involved, whether it was Hezbollah, whether it was Al-Qaeda, as, as part of a design to perhaps avenge the death of a Hezbollah leader in 2009, or some have indicated that the plot was to cause a war between Iran and Israel and thereby clear the way for an Al-Qaeda caliphate across all of Asia. You decide. We've all heard the story of the, do of the boy who cried wolf. And you cry wolf one too many times, nobody believes your original story. So suspecting a false flag attack is similar to the boy who, who called wolf. In this context, uh, both the U.S., Israel, other Western nations, other Muslim nations, most nations have been either accused or have been caught red-handed at one time or another of, uh, of engaging in a false flag of attack to precipitate military action on their behalf. So it's natural that people would wonder whether the recent attacks in, uh, in Bangkok were a false flag attack. What's astounding about this particular group of attacks is the sheer amateurist nature of the attacks. And what I mean by this is that what occurred is that a bomb exploded in a house, obviously unintentionally, blew off the roof, and this is in a, a residential neighborhood, mind you. One of the perpetrators fled from the house, tried to hail down a taxi, then became enraged that the taxi wouldn't stop for him threw another bomb at the taxi, which apparently hit another vehicle, a pickup truck driving by, bounced off the pickup truck, hit a tree, ricocheted off the tree, and landed in front of the alleged terrorist, blowing off his legs. Uh, as a result of this uh, bizarre situation, the uh, three Iranians who have been uh, arrested in connection with this attack have been labeled the Three Stooges from Iran and or alternatively the Iranian Keystone Cops. Curiously, the amateurist nature of this attack is used by both proponents of a false flag theory that it is a false flag and also by the opponents who say that this was a genuine attack. The false flag people say obviously it's a false flag because no, uh, no one was actually hurt except for the, uh, the perpetrators themselves. The non-false flag people say that if it was a false flag, it would have actually been successful and a U.S. target or an Israeli target would have actually been damaged or hurt, and that didn't happen. So therefore, it was not a false flag to attack. This was a legitimate attack, and the people were incompetent. Um, there's been a lot of hyperbole, a lot of dramatic statements coming out of uh, the Iranian mullahs, uh, the Iranian news agency about Israel, uh, against Israel to have it uh, wiped off the map, um, and against the uh, Jewish people as a whole. 
Now, the problem is, or the game that's being played, is that although there's a lot of dramatic language, a lot of hyperbole, there's been no direct military attack coming from Iran directed at an Israeli target or a U.S. target or any other Western target. So we're in kind of a, um, a situation where we can't move forward and we can't move backward in a, from a military standpoint until one side takes a direct action. What's unfortunate in this issue, though, is really a criticism of media as a whole. And that's that when initially, when a dramatic incident happens, such as a bombing, we get a lot of news co coverage, a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of coverage on cable and on the radio, on internet sources. And the coverage focuses on the sensational elements of the story. Ultimately, what happens, though, is that these people are apprehended and they're put through the system of justice. It may be a civilian system of justice, a court of law. It might be a military system of justice. But what happens in the legal process is that we're able to examine the facts carefully and find out exactly what happened. If there was something fishy going on, at least uh, examination in the court process will unveil, will demonstrate the details, and people can pro, uh, uh, conceive of an informed opinion as to the true nature of the fact, rather than focusing on the initial sensational story. Back to you, Allison. Well, there you have it, folks. That's our coverage of the issue, but we do welcome your responses. And while you're at it, we also want to invite you to view our video, Bombings in Bangkok. That's all for today. This is Allison with Tyler Forum. Over and out.